everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and this was the original plan to blast through some scraps together. I had this really cool idea, but guess what? My sewing machine is not playing with me today, so we're going to do that another day once I figure it out. <laughs> so excuse the mess while I just clean up my desk, and we're going to go to plan B, and here it comes. I have been requested by a very good friend of mine. Uh, her name is Sweet Pialana. You may know her. She loves to um, comment and you may have interacted with her. She's awesome. Hello, Alana. <laughs> and uh, I affectionately call her Sweet Pea. And, uh, uh, but basically we are, she had requested once to make a journal out of a uh, padded mail an envelope like one of these things that you get in the mail, you know, the padded mail envelope that uh, we may get a lot of from uh, United Parcel. Maybe we might get them from um, Amazon, that kind of thing. But it, this would actually make an awesome journal. And the only thing you have to be okay with, which I'm okay with now because I'm really understanding that a lot of people like the sounds of things. And before I thought, oh, that sounds kind of crunchy. But no, when I started to... Think, think about it. I kind of liked it. So we're rolling with it. So let's see where it goes. And we're going to use, uh, oh, by the way, this is a no-so <laughs> journal. Okay. So um, I'm going to back up a little so you can see my entire mess. Um, I have of this lovely piece of material and this was um, sent to me by M. Jonasi. So thank you very much for that. This is a gorgeous piece of material and I'm going to, uh, it's an attempt to do it on this particular piece because um, I love it so much and I'm hoping it works. Yes, I think it's going to work. Um, and it might be better if I sew it, but since I'm gonna do a no-sew because I have to, um, we're gonna no-sew it. So my initial thought was to cut this maybe into two separate pieces, but actually the thickness of the entire thing works perfectly for a soft covered journal. It's thick enough um, to have some structure and it's thin enough to um, fold and it feel like a soft uh, fabric cover of a journal. So I guess the first thing I can do and just close this up, this is actually, um, oh, don't tell anybody, this was a new one. I thought I grabbed an old one. Oh well, this is a new one. Okay, just for demonstration purposes only, but please try and reuse um, junk mail if you have it. I honestly thought I grabbed a, uh, an old one, but I didn't and here I am. Okay, so um, what are we gonna grab? Well, if we're not sewing it, eh. We're gluing this baby. That's right. And what are we using? 10 guesses. You got it. Fabrifix. That's what we're going to use. Fabrifix is a clear silicone glue. Good for fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, and paper to paper. So we shall see how you hold up with your claims, dear Fabrifix. Um, everybody does this a little bit differently. And this is probably a little bit bigger than I need. Okay. This fabric's a little thick. Um, but we shall see. It might work. Let me just test. Make sure I can do the folds. Might have to hold and clamp a little bit because the fabric's a little bit thick. But that's okay. We can work with that. It's an upholstery fabric, but this is a gorgeous fabric. I'm gonna do. It. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. All right. So I think I'm gonna cut a little bit of it off. Oh, just getting my fabric scissors. And you want to leave at least a good, a good healthy inch. Um, inch and a half all the way around so that you have something to work with. You don't want to cut too much off. You can always cut more. You can always cut more. And, uh, you know, things that we use for the inside, like uh, insides of our journals, these, um, you know, whether we're using this or felt or a cereal box or whatever it is, the process is pretty much the same for this particular style of journal. But this is just a very, very basic, very easy, very simple journal that anybody can make. And if you happen to have or ever get one of these in the mail, you'll look at it differently thinking, hmm, I could turn that into a journal. And you would be right. Well, at least I think you would be right because, well, let's say I haven't done this yet. But here we go. It's not going to take very long. So hold your horses. Hold your horses. Okay. I'm going to get the edges good. Now, this is relatively thick material. If you have a thinner material, you'll want to... Um, Boy, we really have the orchestra going on in next door in the bird room. You really want to finger smoosh things down so it doesn't bleed through. Uh, ge generally, it doesn't bleed through that much like uh, white glue does, but it's, it could happen a little bit. All right, looks like I'm going to have to do a little more trimming. Um, yep, yep. Let me do a little more trimming over here. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, let me move my cord before I cut it off. All right, trimming, trimming, trimming. 
trimming. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to get some clamps because I got a feeling I might need them with this, bub this bubba. All right, come here. Let's see, let's get some bulldog clamps and some big ones and little ones. And I don't know what we're going to need. I'm just going to grab everything I can find. Okay, here we go. This kind of stuff. That's what you want. These things. You could probably use paper clips too. That would work. Um, okay, so we are down. And then we want to do the corners. Glue them up pretty good. This stuff has to hold, so... And give it a generous amount here. But the more you give it, the longer you have to hold it because it will take a little longer to dry. Okay, so now we're going to do that. Oh, I stuck my elbow in there. Did you see that? Yeah, I got glue on my elbow. Oh, it happens. It happens. All right, we're going to do that. Let's clamp you. No, we want a bigger one. Yeah, these work better. Clamp here. Fold. It's nice if you do a right angle here. See that? That's good. And um, some people like to trim those edges. I like to leave them, honestly. I know, I know, but I always get bare edges showing when I trim them. It's just, I can never cut it at the right spot. I've tried, I've tried. It just never works for me. So do what works for you, what you feel good about. Um, this is my method. Okay, so now we're just going to um, think about who we're going to actually make a Christmas gift for. So we just got a second wait here um so yeah nobody's been good okay they're all off the list well that was easy oh thank goodness gift cards for everyone no no forsake thou how could you say that no we're crafters we craft okay um all right it's probably almost dry did i do the bottoms first i don't remember um i think i did i went this way but we'll just have to go here yeah that's pretty good okay that's good all right here we are back with the big guns again okay here here okay i came in here here i'm just going to do these one at a time just because um this fabric's a little tiny bit thicker but it's beautiful fabric so it's getting used we love it and there's a million one things you can do with fabrics of different thickness so don't ever get freaked out about a thick or a thin fabric you can double things up or you can make um you can sew things differently what what happened my machine was just telling me something I don't know what that was. Okay, I'll just ignore it and carry on as if nothing happened. Yeah, oh, it's actually holding pretty well, but let's just clamp it while we're, while we're clamping. Let's just clamp it. Okay, and let's spin this around. I'm gonna do the same thing. So it's not hard. It's not rocket science. Anybody can make a book. And once you make one book, you might want to make more than one book, which is kind of cool. And then you're gonna have, thinking, oh, God, if I could make a book like that, then I could make a book for this and for that and for the other things and all the magical things that are going on in my mind I could make books for. And you're absolutely right. You can because um, it's not that hard. Now, there are a million and one ways to make a book. Like, did I, did I, I mentioned this is like the basic. This is the basic. We'll make some other kinds, but this is, this is fun for now. All right. Oh, where's those things? Bulldog. Yep. Sonny keeps sleeping. He's sleeping. Yeah. He may do a little hello after. We'll see. We'll see if he's up for it. Okay, here we go. Uh, he does a lot of sleeping. He's puppy sleeping. You know what I mean? This, the, they sleep like, like 10 to 14 hours a day while he's in some of those hours. And sometimes that's an opportune moment for Mama to craft because, well, you know, she can actually get something done without getting her ankles eaten. And uh, there we go. Okay, now it'd be nice if the corners were flush, but they're rarely. Okay. All right. Come in. And clamp. And come in. Let's just square off the corners a little bit better than that. Okay. Not the greatest square corners, but that's okay. I think it'll be a kind of cool look. All right. Squish it down. Squish it down. I didn't even measure this one, but it just looks like it's going to be a good journal size. But I will measure it so that you will know what it is in case you were wondering. Because I know those of you who like to measure like to know these things. I know. But this would be your like your average 9 by 12-ish. I think they're 9.5 by 12.5 maybe. So they can accommodate 9 by 12 inch papers on the inside. Or things. There we go. Uh, Shall I clamp you now? You will be clamped with the rest of them. And with the best of them. There you go. Clamperoo. Clamperoo. Pretty are you. There we go. 
All right, so that's what we have. So, uh, okay, here it is, just so you know, with this particular one, this average padded envelope. Nine and a half by 12 and a half. Okay. All right. Do. Okay. All right. So we have that. So this is our basic journal cover. See how quickly that comes together? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's probably taller than a, a normal journal. So how tall are we? You could, you could cut it shorter. This, whoa, did that ever scare me? That was just a metal pot. Don't worry about it um 10 inches and by about five so we, by the time i did all my folding and squishing it was by 10 by about well, to probably yeah maybe five and a half so almost six okay so that would be a little bit taller you could always cut the um uh, padded thing down inside so that you only have nine by six which is a very easy journal size to work with for the cover because you're when you fold a regular eight and a half by 11 paper in half It'll magically, magically fit a 10 by, a 9 by 6 inside. So, do we want to undo that? We could. We could just make it fit. Maybe I will. Hmm. All right, look. Now you're going to see me back up, retreat, because this is not stuck down that much yet. That's right. That's right. Come apart. Just come apart. Maybe we're going to trim you. Okay, so. Hang on, I'll put you over here so you can see what I'm doing, actually. Okay, I'm resizing this on the go. Because you have to do that sometimes in life. Okay, um, there's my, I'm measuring it. Measuring. Okay, so that would be nine high. I don't, that's how high I would want to go. All right, let me make a mark. This is what I would do if I was you, or you were me. I was like, that's a little too tall and I didn't measure right. Okay, just take off a little. There's nine. Is that nine? That's nine. Oh, it's gonna be that one. Okay, there we go. Are you right there? I don't know. Following, 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 following. You're this one. Okay, you are this one, that one. Okay, don't move, all right. Remeasuring. I can take you off. I can see you now. In the corner. Nine. And there's that one. Nine. Where's my pencil? Should I maybe get a marker for this? I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, this is what I want to cut. Okay. Don't cut your paper, your fabric that short. Just cut the uh, pad the padded envelope we're going to sneak in here going to tear up all our hard work and we're going to fix this so everything's easy yeah nine by six is easy yeah anything other than that means extra cutting follow the line as best you can doesn't have to be perfect but there you go okay now this needs to be a little shorter okay so I am just going to come along and guesstimate. I'm gonna guesstimate cutting it. Okay, here we go. I cut off that much. Okay, just start cutting pan. Leaving a good inch, inch and a half to play with. So you have fold over ability. Okay, there we go. All right. So now everything should be fine. We're gonna come back in here with a big gun of glue. Do our corners just like we did before, repeating the exact process. Okay, yeah, right there. All right, then we clamp it. Okay. All right, it looks like a spider, but it's not, it's a plant. I have to move it. Um, there, There's some flowers I was working with the other day. All right, clamp it. Clamp it. All right, now we're gonna put some glue on this part. Let me reorient you a little. Come here, there you see better. Yeah, better. Too close? Maybe, huh? Right there. Okay, right there, okay, I think that's good. All right, so here, this is the Fabrifix glue. 
glue in this thing. That's got a glue. These should be stuck now. A little bit on here. A little bit on here. All right, now we're going to glue this over. Yeah. All right, now we have you in place, and we will we'll clamp you. We're going to have to re-glue this side because I pulled on it. Okay. And we're glued. Okay. Glued, glued, glued. Glued, glued, glued. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're just going to glue down this. So it ran away. Or it came off because I pulled it off. Okay, just putting more glue there. Lots more glue. Glue. Hold everybody back up. Square the corners as best as possible. And how well they square will depend on how thick your material is. Sometimes they square better than others. Yeah, I have a few ideas for these corners that we might play with. Okay, so yeah, there we go. I think we're good. Let's just let that grab for a second. Now, it does have a crinkly sound, but I think it's kind of cool. I hope you do too. Um, okay, now I was, oh, this is kind of cool paper. Might be a little thin though. Something a little thicker, maybe material because it's foldy. Yeah, let me find a piece of material for the inside of this. You can totally, totally use uh, paper. I would recommend maybe putting a piece of material down the center and then two separate pieces of paper here because the paper, I think, eventually will, eh, it'll probably be all right, but I don't want you to have any issues. Let me look, let me look around, see what I got. Okay, I found this piece of, um, this is actually a silk, piece i think it's a silk that is a remnant of um upholstery making um it's glue glue well over here did it I, did, I never said fabric to plastic did i no no okay we'll just see we'll see how it goes yeah we'll see okay all right so saying so so sewing would be awesome with this because it would really tack this down to the plastic. I hope the Fabrifix holds. It seems to be holding. We are so far so good. Let's just give this a go. All right. So she says again, let's measure a little piece. Let's see what we got here. Got that. Got that to there, that to there. You to there. So we have to cut you here. Where's the fabric scissors here? Okay, I don't know if this stuff tears. We're gonna find out. Not willingly, here we go. Ah! Okay, but it did, it gave way, it had no choice, okay. And I think I'm gonna leave the uh, salvage edge. I think that's a salvage edge there, like the rough edge. I'm just gonna leave them because I think there's something, I don't know, fabric-y about it. Yeah, just kinda, kinda looking cool with the whole fabric theme going here. Okay, got that there, got that there. And that means we just have to cut this. What you doing, Sunny? Are you up? Yeah, I'm up, Mom. All right. Be with you in a second, son. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. We're in the throws, son. We're in the throws. No, we're not, we're not throwing the ball right now. We're in the throws. The throws mean we go get it? Go fetch? No, not right now, honey. Okay, soon though, okay? All right, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, we play so much fetch around here. It's it's insane. Yes, we are fetch. Um, we are fetch experts. Yeah, that's right. More glue. More glue needed here. Okay, there we go. Just hold it. Hold it in place. Give it a second to grab. I think um, I think the old uh, hot glue gun would probably work well here because that pretty much glues everything, right? Yeah. Okay. You just want to you want to be clamped. Okay, fine. Be clamped. Now, this will probably bleed through if I don't finger smoosh it well. So I'm going to finger smoosh very well on this one. Very well, very well. I like the thickness. It's a good thickness. Yes, yes it is. Okay, there we go. Are you good? No issues? Okay. All right, here we go. Let's, uh, oh, no, we don't want to put it on you first. Okay, let's just go around here. We're at least going around this edge. We know that. Okay, we can always come in and tack the edges. Put this here. Nice little back and forth 
switchbacks, as they say on the mountains. And then we go this way. Anybody from Colorado? Hello, Colorado. Any switchbacks lately? Yes? Arizona? Utah? Oregon? Anybody out there? Or how about about maybe uh, Blue Ridge Mountains? Anybody from Blue Ridge? Love the Blue Ridge. Those are beautiful. They're all beautiful. Who are we kidding? Uh, I would live in flat Florida, so I'm very mountain appreciative. Yes, yes. We have small hills here. We, we have one place called Mount Dora. It's not a mountain, but it, it, it's like a mountain to us, you know, because it's a little higher. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. The big lay down. Oh, I think I have it backwards. Oh, well, that's fine. It's wet, wet it is. All right, let's, let's hope we didn't get, we don't get too much bleed through. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And we're down. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now, I was worried about the wrinkles the other day. Today, I'm not. I'm just not. You know what? I'm going to let the wrinkles be um, and honor them as they are and just enjoy them in their glory. What's wrong with a good wrinkle? I'm learning to embrace wrinkles. How about you? Anybody? <laughs> are y'all wrinkle free? Because I'm not. <laughs> um, so there you go. Yeah. Just got to move forward and carry on. All right, there we are. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want you to know that like a lot of the things that you guys face out there in making your journals, I face too, you know, on a daily basis. Things come up, things come apart, things go awry and amuck, and things happen. Yes. But remember, it's only paper and we carry on. Okay, this is me declaring where the, the middle is. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to make the middle. Okay. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Look how cute that is. Now that's a, that's a decent cover. Okay, let me show you. Okay, that's the thickness of the cover. It's, kind of, it's, it's um, sturdy, uh, but soft at the same time. So it's got some, I don't want to squish it up too much because the glue is still setting. But uh, yeah, get in there and set glue. Set, set, set. And uh, I'm, I'm really actually very happy with that. Um, oh, that would look so cool with... Uh, this seam binding as the the tie, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I almost feel like this would be great for a one signature journal. Now you could do a fatter spine and you just would create it. You would create like a fold here and then a fold here and then you would have a fatter spine. You see that? Um, and then you could put more signatures in it. See that? Like that. You could do that. But I think I'm just going to do a one signature spine. Let me, let me measure. I'm going to measure and make sure you can see where the holes are. I'm not tip, uh, how wide these covers are. Five, five and a half. Okay, if I really flatten it out. I got a... So, I got a six. Look at that. Yeah, I did get a six. Yeah. Okay, it's right at the six line. Okay, that's the six. So, I can definitely do a regular uh, copy paper page in here. So let me grab some papers together and we'll do a big fat signature in here. Okay, hold on. Okay, I have gathered together, I believe, uh, 20 pages. And uh, I don't think that's too many. I think it's gonna be fine for the single signature journal. And basically when you're deciding number of signature pages, it depends on the thickness of your pages. If um, your pages are super thick, like you're using um, thicker than copy weight paper, um, copy copier paper weight um, you're going to have to use thinner pages but if you use thin pages you can use more pages so a good average is between 10 and 15 12 is a good general number um, for copy paper and if you go thicker than that you might want to uh, uh, use fewer pages and also you yeah, want to ask yourself are you going to be bulking up the pages with stuff or are you just going to um, make it a writing journal and you can then put more pages in as well so hopefully that helps. So now magically, the sheer magic of uh, television, I'm just going to fold these together in one big clump. And these are all, I think they're all eight and a half by 11 sheets, which makes life very easy. Nice big fold. You can fold these individually if you want. Um, or not, depending on what you're doing. Now, you know, when you fold a bunch of pages together, now we want to do the whack-a-mole. Here's, this is the, 
This is the grand whack-a-mole technique. This gets all your papers aligned. Is that the center? There. Whack-a-mole. Um, it brings everybody together. Now, if you can see, the middle ones are further to the right than the, the ones on the outside. So that means you're going to have a little duck mouth here. You can come and shave all that off. Or you can leave it as is, totally depending on your style of um, uh, journal that you would like to create. But for this particular type, let me. What's going to dictate for me is if it sticks out or not, because um, it's more of a casual style, comfy, snuggle up on the couch, just write yourself a few notes kind of journal, journal. You know what I mean? And um, I don't mind if a few little things stick out because I might even put page tabs in here or little danglies or something like that. Um, so I, I like little things sticking out sometimes. So that's okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead. And this is, um, okay, let's find the center of the journal first of all. And I'm just going to use that by measuring up these two edges here and find my true center. I seem to have threads of something elsewhere. Oh, I'm just going to use the seam binding. Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Okay. There's my Oh, hello, bone folder. There you are. Okay. Now I'm trying to fold a padded envelope, which isn't going to crease like paper, but I just want to get a general consensus of, I think that's where my middle is here. Okay. Folding, folding. Okay. Cause I gotta, I gotta figure out where to put the holes, which is the most important thing. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to use a marker opening, seeing where the actual middle is. I think it's right in the middle of that, that there's like a lump in the middle of mine. Is that where the middle is? Yeah, that's fine. Here, Let's try this. No, oh, there I think is. Yeah, I think it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to put maybe one hole. Am I straight? Let me see. Let me use this to see. Am I straight? Let's put straight. Straight on the line on my craft mat. Straight on the line with the ruler. Should be a straight line, right? Yeah, should be. All right, let's try this. Oh boy, I hope this works. One, did I get it? One, two, three. Okay, I have three, three holes. Okay, nobody breathe, nobody move. Where's the cap? There it is. Okay, got it. All right, I was always tilted. There we go. Okay, now. Crocodile two big bite coming in, coming in. All right, here we go. I'm going to use the one eighth, which is the middle one. Okay, not to the right, not to the left, but in the middle. And I'm going to punch a hole. And I'm looking from the side. And I'm hovering, trying to find where the hot the dot is, hoping I get it under the thingy. Okay, let's hope it's there. Oh yeah, we went through everything. No problem. Good. And it was at the right spot. Okay. Now this is probably the trickiest part because this stuff's a little thicker, but it gets in there. It does. Okay. Here. And let's hope this is the right spot. Okay. Yep. We were good so far. Gotta pull it out and turn it around. All the glue is holding. Things are coming together. All right. Here we go. I think I'm over the hole. Okay. There we go. Okay. Come on out. Okay. Now I, I rotated it. Oh, is that my top? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So I don't forget, I'm just going to clamp it to remind myself this is the top. And I also know it's the blue stitching that is the top. Mark your top somehow in your own mind so you know because it will be very helpful for you. Okay, so get all that together and then come here. It's nice if you have some room to work with, that's right. And we're going to line this baby up where we want it to sit. And we're just looking, let me put so you could see. See, too close? Okay, back it up, there. Okay, now, see the holes? I'm looking at the holes. And I'm aligning with the holes. Okay, and then I'm gonna make sure I've got enough, whoop, can't see. Make sure I have enough that the journal is on the inside of the top and the bottom. You wanna make sure it's in the center before you put your dots down. And then I'm going to measure from, the, I'm not going to measure. I'm going to see where the hole is. And I'm just going to make a mark on my clump of papers. Okay. Now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to 
clamp it. Okay, now turn it over and I like to fold it back on itself right where the spine was. So um, I just think it's a good thing. <laughs> All right, did I move that? I think I moved it. Oh, well. I think that's okay. There, all right. We better double check. Okay, now I'm nervous. Okay, go back in, double check. Okay, this is what happens. Make sure your dots are in the right place. One, check, two, check, three, check. Okay, everybody's in the right place. Okay, keep everybody in the same place. Turn it over. You can fold it back on itself if you want. I'm not moving it because I'm not 100% sure I didn't already move it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same hole, one eighth, not changing the setting on the crocodile. I'm just going ahead and punching. Padunch, padunch, padunch. And one more padunch. Here we go. Hold on to your toes. There we go. Okay, now everything is good. Oh, I found the cap. Look at that. It just appeared out of nowhere. Look at that. Cool. Okay, so flip this over. We know that's the front. Whoops. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to try seam binding as a sewing thread. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see. I've got a giant big eyed needle. Look at that. Uh, I think it's a yarn needle, darning needle. It's got a blunt end. Do, 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 do. See, very blunt. Um, one, two, three times the height. Should be enough. Okay, I'm going to cut it on angle. I just think that will be cute. And we get in there. And we'll see if we can get through that hole with this seam binding. Seam binding's pretty thin. That's what I'm banking on here. Thin, I'm banking. Okay. Yeah. What do they say? Even a blind squirrel can find a nut. There's, I just, there you go. Okay, let's hope this works. Hope I didn't short myself. I did. I've got more seam binding. Okay. Clearing the decks. So I'm just going through once. Yes, yes, I am going to glue all these down, but they're just not glued at the moment. I will glue them later. Okay, here we go. I'm through and then through the middle. Three hold pamphlet stitch occurring right now before your eyes. Now sometimes when you have fabric or you have padded envelope or you have other substances that are not paper, you might have to do a little searching for your, uh, the hole. Oh, I'm sitting on my cord. Okay, here we go. Coming through. Okay, oh, it's, it's work. I think it's gonna work. Okay, I go here and I'm going finding the hole. And am I in? No, I'm in. Am I in? That, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you, it works, it just works. And it's good. Life is good. Leave a little tail. Leave a little tail. Okay, here. Down through the bottom. Through the bottom hole. I can already feel it. It went through. See that? It's through. Pulling. Pulling. Whoop. Don't lose that one. No, you don't want to lose that one. Okay. Now go through the same middle hole as you were before. So whence you came, right? Right? <laughs> I'm apparently still in uh, Shakespeare mode. Uh, from whence thou came. Um, okay, here we go. The pull. Okay. What's that? I don't know. Let's figure it out. All right. <laughs> I've got my cord tied right around my bottom and my middle. Okay, there we go. I'm free now. I'm free. I can go play with the other kids in the sandbox. <laughs> what is this? I have no idea. Why is that there? Okay, we'll just see about you. We'll put you back out. But are you? Oh, oh, there. Okay. I don't know. It was just a weird thing. Okay, we got a little of that this way. A little that this way. Okay, good. There we go. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay, now let's just look. This is called the double check. You want to make sure everything is okay over here. And it is okay. We need to snug it up though. Okay. Okay, let's look now. Yeah. Now yeah, that looks okay, right? Okay, we can make this one skinner just by squashing it together. It's just a visual thing. Yeah. And you could you could do this reverse. Like you could, if you start on the outside hole and come in, your tails will be on the outside when you end. So wherever you start is where you end. Most important thing, you see this bridge? You have to have one wing under the left side, one wing under the right side. So when this tie happens, it captures the bridge. That's very important. So right over left. Left over right, we'll anchor that knot forevermore. And that's a pretty big knot because I'm using seam binding. So I'm not gonna do my third case emergency knot because I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about that. So I'm gonna take these off because, hey folks, we just made a journal. Yeah, we just made a journal and she's done. She is done a Mm-hmm. Okay, 
scorching. Now this one might have the desire to ding, open because it's a paper or it's a padded envelope and it lies it likes to lie straight but the more you train it like if you um, have it closed with let's say you came up with some fancy clamp you know you could do that or or i have options we have options hold on the old elastic cord never fails it's very easy to put take on uh, Put on take off you can uh, these actually you can just buy them on a, a roll and make them yourself or you can um, uh, buy them pre-made to certain uh, like tightnesses already but you can adjust them if they need to be adjusted if they're already pre-made this one's a pre-made all right there we go so i'm just going to adjust it to the width of this journal and that easy to take on and off no problem and if you want to decorate it up you could hang a little key from a little gourd pin little key from a little gourd pin and maybe hang that on there too just for fun or you could put some beads or whatever you like um so there you go that's how we made a journal out of a, a padded envelope and uh, i hope you had fun i hope you enjoyed this if you um um would like to see more videos they come out mondays wednesdays fridays and saturdays at 7 a.m eastern time my podcasts come out tuesdays and thursdays if you find value here please like subscribe share and comment and um if you want to see more videos feel free to click the notification bell hopefully you'll be um, notified when i put out a new video and my favorite tools and supplies are found in my amazon store all my links are down below in my description box uh, in my Etsy shop, you're, you're going to find vintage digital download kits as well as um, ephemera collections, which are uh, old um, ephemera papers that I mail to you. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, feel free to check those out. You're going to find a nice supply of uh, old ledger pages, old music pages, old... Um, I, I made some hand dyed pages I put in there and a whole uh, array of different things, old postcards and handwritten pages and um, um, a whole, there's like a hundred pieces in each set. So um, if you're just starting out and you want a collection to start with because you're not quite sure what your fascination is, you're going to find um, nature pictures, um, Victorian pictures, all sorts of different related things. Um, uh, so you might find your happy place or what, what it, you find intriguing to play with in the future or you just want might want to add to your collection or it may be hard for you to find stuff or when you find stuff it's way too expensive uh, or you have no room to store stuff these might help you out so I hope that's helpful they all come from my collection and they are what I use to make my junk journals uh, personally and um, I just uh, like the idea of sharing them with you guys so I also have a Facebook group if you're interested come on over and check it out you're welcome to just hang out and lurk or you can um, uh, jump on in and we do weekly and monthly challenges as well as just um, uh, you guys sharing with us what you make from the videos here and just inspiring the heck out of all of us and remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon everybody and we'll see you next time bye bye bye